Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I want to show you how you can use artificial intelligence tools um, to your advantage to create textures that you can use in your designs and we'll be creating this specific scene, a um, little science fiction setup with some control panel and with some display and we'll provide the texture for the display using the Mid Journey AI generator and I will show you how to do that just in a second and if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to leave a like it will really help me and if you're new to the channel and you want to see tutorials like this in the future please hit that subscribe and additionally bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new and if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. So to start creating with Midjourney, um, you just go to midjourney.com and you join the beta and that will direct you into their discord channel and you can see how it looks right there and basically your first steps should be um, in the newcomer rooms here in newbies um, there will be some suffix there but basically whichever of these room you will use you will be just fine and then you can just prompt your request right here you will use slash imagine and then spacebar and you just write whatever you want to create so for example spaceship like Star Wars or something like that and you will see a lot of new messages appearing here that's other users requesting because um, when you join the free beta um, you will have just these newcomer rooms available if you want your own like direct channel to the discord bot you will need to pay subscription and join the mid journey like that um, and I've done that so if you go to your direct messages um, you will see your direct message um, with the mid journey bot right here um, it's very easy to message it and they have um, great support articles on their website so you shouldn't have any issues getting this to work and basically when you want to create some texture for you you just need to think about a little bit what you want to actually create and I have a prompt here that I used on my recent design so I will just write imagine and I will just copy paste it here and you can see it says sci-fi spaceship display navigational star map layout with planets and statistics and you can add another keywords um, separated by comma so you can see I have monochrome here very detailed like Star Trek display and you just confirm it and then you should get your result um, very soon so let's see what mid journey will generate um, when we enter a prompt like this you will get some percentage of progress here and you will have to wait a little bit and right here after it's done you can see um, we have four examples generated and you can either use to upscale one of those or you can create different versions based on one of them so if you like for example this one that's version 3 you can click v3 and it will generate four new examples based of that one um, but right here I can see this is one to one ratio this is a square image so if you want to change that you can choose a different command so I will paste the same command and then you can hit spacebar and you can use AR setting and that stands for aspect ratio and you can use 16 to 9 and that way you will get um, the format you desire okay so we have some results here and I really like the first one so let's create multiple versions from there and then we'll decide which one of those will upscale and use as our texture and it's done and I really like the third one um, there are some additional lines you know some additional text and I can really see something like this working on a navigational screen in a spaceship or something so let me just upscale the version 3 and I will save the image and use it as a texture so we can then jump right into blender and model a small scene where we can use it okay so the upscaling has finished and this is absolutely amazing that this can be created using an AI tool just by providing a text prompt, you know, with your request. And of course, up close, this doesn't make any sense. Um, there is no like visible text or anything. Um, I'm pretty sure it can be refined. There are many people who work with this AI tool every day and probably would get better results for this. Um, but for example, if you're working on some diorama or some really distant scene where you need to play some texture on a screen, imagine you would need to prepare something like this in a Photoshop or 
or some other tool and on the other hand if you download some random image of the internet you might run into a licensing troubles um, so probably this is the fastest and most efficient way how to get textures of course you would need to pay for this because licensing apply for these generated images as well just go to the Midjourney webpage and you know read through that license but for most cases you should be fine using this so i will just save this um to my hard drive and then probably invert it in photoshop you know crop it refine it a little bit and i will see you back in blender so in the empty blender file um, i will leave the camera we'll use it later so let's select everything here press x and delete and right now i'll press shift a and let's add a plane now i will scale it up um, to have some proportions that I'm used to so tab in and scale this four times it will be probably a little bit too large but whatever um, let's press ctrl shift b to bevel these corners and I will increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel um, something like four cuts should be enough to create a shape like that now press a to select all and e to extrude this up now let's hit three for face select alt click this loop and I'll press i to inset and release it like this and then alt e and extrude faces along normals and let's extrude it inside you can additionally press s for even scaling and do something like that now i'll tab out and let's add some bevel modifier and let's refine these options so i want two segments here and let's reduce the amount to something like this and then in the geometry i want to arc for the miter and disable clamp overlap and in shading I want to enable harden normals and you will see this warning here don't worry about that just go to the object data properties normals and enable auto smooth and increase to 180 degrees that will get rid of the warning now right click and shade smooth and you have this nice smooth bevel design and for the next step to work you need to activate the bull tool add-on and you can find the list of add-ons I'm using for this tutorial in the description so after installing the bull tool add-on you know just go into the preferences add-ons and activate it there um, you can now press shift a and add a cube now let's tab into the edit mode press s and scale it up a little bit just like this and now hit 2 for edge select and Control alt click the edges on the side to select them all around and press ctrl b to bevel and do something like this now let's hit 7 on an ampad for top view tab out of the edit mode press g and move it like this to the side and now right click shade smooth don't worry about the shading shift click the main object and let's hit ctrl and slash on an ampad that's the command for the bull tool if it doesn't work for you or you're working on a laptop um, just go into the preferences of the add-on and change the shortcuts and now let's collapse the bevel modifier and let's move the boolean modifier above and let's do the same for the other object like this so now we have two objects and both of them have the same bevel modifier and same boolean operator so we can now move this around and we have this nice panel inset so we'll use this technique to you know um, create some additional details in our design so let's press shift a and let's add another cube and i'll press g then shift z and move it somewhere here now tap into the edit mode three for face select select this face press g then x and make it a little bit longer like this now back to edge select by pressing 2 select this edge right here and ctrl b to bevel it and i'll reduce with the mouse wheel so we have this nice like a slant now tab out and again we'll do the same so i'll select both of those and control slash on an ampad and move this above the bevel modifier and here as well so we have some nice science fiction paneling and now we can create the rest of our scene so first of all let's select everything press one on an ampad and press g then z and move this down so we have the zero coordinate here and now let's press shift a and let's add a plane now tab into the edit mode press s to scale it down and s then x to scale on x axis maybe we can make it a little bit larger like this and now just extrude let's look from the side by pressing 3 on an ampad and we can press ctrl alt shift s to skew this and additionally y to define the axis and 1 on an ampad to make this 45 degrees and enter to confirm and now let's rotate the view a little bit Control alt click the edges here again Control b to bevel and let's increase the number of cuts like this now face select by pressing 3 select this face and hold shift s and snap cursor to select it tab out and let's press shift a and let's add a plane now i'll press r x and 45 degrees 
which should match perfectly and now tap into the edit node press s then x to scale it on x axis like this and additionally we'll press shift ctrl shift b to bevel these corners just like that press a to select all and e to extrude uh, maybe i'm going a little bit too quick so if you have problem uh, following me just go into the youtube player settings and change the speed preferences that should really help you and now let's press i to inset like this and e to extrude again so this will be our little control panel and now hold shift s again and snap cursor select it that will move it there tab out and let's press shift a and let's add another plane now press r then x and 45 degrees like this confirm with enter tap into the edit mode and press s to scale it down like this leave some room there and now s then x and scale it up and we'll create some kind of keyboard so let's press ctrl r to create a loop cut and increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel to something like this um really depends on the level of stylization you're going for and how large these buttons should be so let's press ctrl r and create some vertical cuts like this and now let's select everything press 3 for face select um you will see why in a second and now let's press ctrl b to bevel this like that and reduce with the mouse wheel to just one cut and you should get something like this um, to leave some room in between the buttons and since we were in the face select these faces stay selected and we can just press x and delete all of these faces now a to select all and e to extrude our buttons and now let's hold period on an numpad to switch to individual origins and now let's press s and scale them individually if they are too high you can press alt s you know to move them according to their normals and you have some keyboard and to make it a little bit more sophisticated just click away to the select and let's select some of these keys and we'll delete some of those you know to leave some room and to create some interesting composition maybe something like this um, that should work nicely so tab out and now let's rotate this a little bit and i will select all of these objects press g then y and move them somewhere here probably and now let's hit shift s and snap cursor to world origin and let's press shift a and create a new plane i'll press g then y and move it somewhere here we'll create our display so tap into the edit mode let's press s to scale it down and s then x to scale on x axis and now we'll just press e to extrude now two for edge select select this edge hold shift s and cursor to select it now tab out and we'll add another object so let's press shift a and let's add a plane I'll press R, then X and 90, confirm with enter. Now tap into the edit mode and scale it up like this. Um, basically, whatever the size of the display you need. And now S, then X and scale it like that. Um, if you want to match your proportions of your texture, um, just hit N for side panel and look for the dimensions. And you can enter 16 to 9, just like that. And then you can press Ctrl A to apply the scale. You will see it will change right here and now you can hide the side panel with n again and go into the edit mode and scale it in the uniform way just like that and you have the correct proportions now press ctrl r and increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel just like this and we will curve this a little bit so let's select these edges on the side by holding shift let's look from the top by pressing 7 on an numpad and we'll press o to enable proportional editing right here press g then y and start moving this and with the mouse wheel you can increase the fall off just like that and create a curvature and i think i want this to be more pronounced so let's make this really large and i will just move it like this and then press a to select all and move it a little bit back i will disable the proportional editing by hitting o again and press alt e and extrude along normals just like that now let's select these edges on the side by holding shift and we'll press ctrl b to bevel them and increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel to something like four there should be enough and now three for face select and select these faces in the front press i to inset and e to extrude inside okay tab out and we can bring this up a little bit okay so this will be our small science fiction composition a little bit of a spaceship cockpit or something like that and now let's select all of these objects 
with the platform as last and now go here and copy it, select it for the bevel modifier, double transfer it to our other objects. And now by holding control, we can deselect the platform and by holding shift, we can make this active. So it's highlighted in yellow. And let's now go to the object data properties. Let's hold alt key and click auto smooth. That will apply that option to all of those. And again, we'll hold alt key and increase this to 180 degrees, right click and shade smooth for all of these objects. And we now have our modeling complete. Um, and again, to make this more interesting, you can, for example, slant these um, by beveling them, or you can add some cables, you know, some more cutouts, whatever works for you and whatever you like, um, you should be able to do it. Now let's proceed by actually using a texture that we created. So first of all, I will set up some rendering, go to the render settings and for the EV render engine, I'll use that just for preview, but I'll enable ambient occlusion bloom and screen space reflection. So it's a little bit nicer in the viewport. And now let's switch to cycles, enable GPU and I'll enable some denoising right here. And now let's hold Z and go to the material preview and I'll enable scene lights and scene world. So we actually see what our scene looks like. And now let's select our display and let's go to the material tab and let's create a new material. And that will be the first metallic material we'll use. So let's increase the metallic value for that. And let's reduce a value a tiny bit, just like this. And now we'll create the screen material. So let's hit the plus icon to create a new material slot and let's create a new material. Let's call this screen. And now in the base color, let's hit this little dot and let's connect some image texture there and we'll open our texture. So I selected the texture and it's loaded up, um, but we actually need to assign it. So go into the edit mode and this should be still selected from the last edit. If you don't have it selected, go for face select, click right here and control click the last phase to select them all. And now let's select the screen material and hit assign. So you should have your image there. Tab out and as you can see, I inverted the image and cropped it a little bit. Um, so now we can go to the UV editing tab and you can see the mapping here. And this needs a little bit of refinement. So let's select everything here and press S to scale it up a tiny bit like that. And we can enable material preview so we can see it here in the viewport as well. Okay, that should be enough. And now let's go to the shading workspace and we'll add some emission here. So first of all, we'll use this image just as a mask since it's black and white. So let's press shift A and let's add some color and mix RGB node. Let's connect it here, but I will switch this to factor. Set the first color to black and the second color to whatever color you want that will be basically your display. So if your cockpit should be like tinted blue, you can use the blue color and I will use probably something like this here and then you can grab this and connect it to your emission channel and set emission strength to something like five and you have your display let's go back to the layout view and this is what we have here and now let's add some materials to the rest of these objects um, and i will actually disable the scene lights and scene world so we better see the materials here that was a little bit too soon when i switched it so let's select these objects one by one and add our metallic material and if you want some differences, you can select some of these. Um, be careful when you use Boolean, these, all of these objects are linked. Um, that's, why, that's why they all have this material assigned right now. And if you want to differentiate between them, you will need to switch this to object and select that material. We can then duplicate it and for example, change its value. So it's a little bit darker or something like that. And we can use the darker material here as well. And maybe for the screen, so we have some, you know, shading differences. And now let's select the buttons and we'll create a new material. Let's keep it white and let's add new material slot, create a new material and let's switch from principle to a mission. And we'll probably need to use the similar tint as with the screen, set the strength to five and now tap into the edit mode. And I will just select some of these buttons um, using L and you know, light them up by assigning that material there. Okay, so that's for the materials. Now let's hit Shift S and snap cursor to world origin. We'll press Shift A and create a new plane. Press S to scale it up. That will be our background. So let's look from the front, press G then Z and move it down like this. And let's hit zero on an unpad for a camera view. And we can select the camera and press G then Z twice to move it further back out like this and then press G to position it like this. 
Okay, I really like this. And now let's go to the output settings and change the resolution to something different. So we have more space for our design, something like this. And now select the background, we'll create a new material and add black color to that. Now I'll hit Ctrl B to limit our rendering preview just for the camera bounce. And now let's hold Z and switch to the rendered preview. And you should see something like this here. Um, and I really like this. There is a nice light coming from this emission, but it will need some supporting lights. So let's press Shift A and let's add an area light. Press G then Z to move it up. And I will increase the size to something like this. Switch it from square to disk and let's set something like 1500 for power. And let's make it a little bit blue. And now I'll press G then Shift Z and move it back like this behind the screen maybe a little bit over it and maybe this is too blue so something like this should work nicely and now let's go to the world settings and increase the world color and use some tint you know maybe a little bit of a purple color and then for this light we can go maybe a little bit more cyan like this okay let's go to the render settings and in the color management i'll increase the contrast and play with the exposure and basically this is it this is our design of course you can play with the lights intensity maybe make this light in the back a little bit stronger bring it higher or further back whatever works to make this look a little bit better but the purpose of the tutorial was to show you how you can use ai tools that are popping up nowadays like mid journey um, to create textures that you can right away use in your designs you can see right away that it doesn't matter that it's not readable um, from afar this looks great and if you for example place it in some spaceship or in some science fiction environment um, it won't matter at all and you will get your textures as quickly as possible because a lot of artists are a little bit afraid of these tools but they're not perfect and they will need our help for a long time and actually we can use them and leverage them to our advantage to create things in a way that it was never possible before so you know as they say if you can't beat them um, you can join them so right here this is a proof how this can be useful um, I really hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and let me know in the comment section um, if you want to see like more AI related tutorials or AI related content. And maybe let me know your opinion on this, um, how you see the role of AI evolving over time in everyday artist life. Um, and again, if you're new to the channel and you're interested in more tutorials, please hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.